Adonai said to Moshe, On behalf of the people of Israel, take vengeance on the Midian. After that, you will be gathered to your people. Moshe said to the people, Equip, equip men from among yourselves for war. They are to go and fight Midian in order to carry out Adonai's vengeance on Midian. You are to send to the war a thousand men from every one of Israel's tribes. So out of thousands of people in Israel, a thousand armed men from each tribe, twelve thousand altogether, were mustered for war. Moshe sent them a thousand from each tribe to the war. He sent them and Pinchas, the son of Eleazar, the Kohen, to the war with the holy utensils and the trumpets for sounding the alarm in his care. They fought against Midian as Adnai had ordered Moshe and killed every male. They killed the kings of Midian along with the others who were slain. Evi, Rechem, Zor, Hur, Riva, and five kings of Midian. They also killed Balaam, the son of Bor. With the sword, the people of Israel took captive the women of Midian and their little ones, and they took as booty all their cattle, flocks, and goods. They set fire to all the cities and areas where they lived in all their camps. They took all the booty, all the people, all the animals they had captured, and brought the captives, booty, spoil, to Moshe, Eleazar, the Kohen, and the community of Israel in the camp on the plains of Moab by the Yarden across from Jericho. Moshe, Eleazar the Kohen, and all the community leaders went to meet them outside the camp. But Moshe was angry with the army officers, the commanders of thousands, and the commanders of hundreds coming in from the battlefield. Moshe asked them, You let the women live? Why these are the ones who, because of Balaam's advice, caused the people of Israel to rebel, breaking faith with Adonai in the poor incident, so that the plague broke out among Adonai's community. Now kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has slept with a man. But the young girls who have never slept with a man, keep alive for yourselves. Pitch your tents outside the camp for seven days, Whoever has killed a person or touched the corpse of someone slain, purify yourselves on the third and seventh days. You and your captives also purify every garment, whether of skin or goat's hair, and everything made of wood. Eleazar the Kohen said to the soldiers who were gone and to the front, This is the regulation from the Torah, which Adonai has ordered Moshe. Even though gold, silver, brass, iron, tin, and lead can all withstand fire so that you are indeed to purify everything made of these materials by having them pass through the fire. Nevertheless, they must also be purified with the water for purification. Everything that can't withstand fire, you're to have go through the water. On the seventh day, you are to wash your clothes and you will be clean. After that, you may enter the camp. Adonai said to Moshe, Take all the booty, both people and animals, you and Eleazar, the Kohen, the leaders of the clans and the community, and divide the booty into two parts, half for the experienced soldiers who went out to battle and half for the rest of the community. From the portion of the soldiers who went out to battle, levy a tax for Adnai, consisting of one-fifth hundreds of the persons, cattle, donkeys, and sheep. Take from it the half and give it to Eleazar the Kohen as a portion set apart for Adonai. From the half that goes to the people of Israel, you are to take one-fifth, one-fiftieth one of the persons of the cattle, donkeys, sheep, that is, of all the livestock, and give them to the Levitim, taking care of the tabernacle of Adonai. Moshe and Eleazar the Kohen did as Adonai had ordered Moshe, the booty over over and above the portion which the soldiers took care came to 675,000 sheep, 72,000 cattle, 61,000 donkeys, and 32,000 persons in all, consisting of the women who had never slept with a man. The half, which was the portion of the soldiers who went up out to fight, numbered 337,500 sheep, of which Adonai's tribute was 60, 675. 36,000 cattle, of which Adonai's tribute was 72, 30,500 donkeys, of which Adonai's tribute was 61, and 16,000 persons, of whom Adonai's tribute was 32 persons. 
Moshi gave the tribute set apart for Adnai to Eleazar the Kohen, as Adnai had ordered Moshi. From the half that went to people of Israel, which Moshi separated from the men who had gone to fight, now the community half consisted of 337,500 sheep, 36,000 cattle, 30,500 donkeys, 16,000 persons. From the person of Israel's half, Moshi took one-fiftieth of the persons and animals, gave them to the Levim, taking care of the tabernacle of Adnai, as Adnai had ordered Moshi. The officers in charge of the thousands who fought, the commanders of the thousands and commanders of hundreds, approached Moshi and said to him, Your servants have counted all the soldiers under our command, and not one of us is missing. We have brought an offering to Adonai, what every man has obtained in the way of gold, jewelry, amulets, bracelets, signet rings, earrings, and belts, to make atonement for ourselves before Adonai. Moshe and Eleazar the Kohen accepted their gold of all jewelry, all the gold in, it, in this gift which the commanders of thousands and the commanders of hundreds set apart for Adonai weighed 420 pounds, for the soldiers had taken booty every man for himself. Moshe and Eleazar the Kohen took the gold from the commanders of thousands and the hundreds, brought it into the tent of meeting as a reminder of the people of Israel before Adonai. The descendants of Ruv and the descendants of Gad had a vast quantities of livestock. When they saw that the land of Yezer, the land of Gilead, were good for livestock, the descendants of Gad and of Reuven came and spoke to Moshe. Eleazar, the Kohen, and the community leaders, they said, Terah, Davan, Yezer, Nimrah, Hashban, Elela, Svan, Nvo, and Bion. The country of Adonai conquered before the community of Israel is livestock community, and your servants have livestock. If you regard us favorable, then went on. Let this land be given to your servants as their possession, and don't have us cross the Yarden. Moshe answered the descendants of Gad and Reuben, Are you are your brothers to go to war while while you stay here? Besides, why are you trying to discourage the people of Israel from crossing into the land of Adnai gave them? This is what your fathers did when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. For when they went up to the Eshkol Valley and saw the land, they disheartened the people of Israel so that they wouldn't enter the land of Adonai had given them. Adonai's anger blazed up on that day and he swore none of the people aged 20 or more who came out of Egypt will see the land I swore to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov because they hadn't followed me unreservedly except Caleb and the son of Yufni and Knizzi and Yeshua the son of Nun because they have followed Adonai unreservedly. Thus Adonai's anger anger blazed against Israel so that he made them wander here and there in the desert 40 years until all the generation had had done evil in the sight of Adonai had died out. Now you, another brood of sinners, have risen in your father's place to increase still more the fierce anger of Adonai toward Israel. For if you turn away from him, he will leave them in the desert again, and thus you will cause the destruction of all this people. But they came up, they came up to him and said, Here we will build enclosures for our livestock and cities for our little ones. But we ourselves will be armed and ready for action to march at the head of the people of Israel until we have brought them to their place. Our little ones will stay in the fortified cities here because the people are now living in the land. However, we will not return to our own homes until every man in Israel has taken possession of his land for inheritance. We will not have an inheritance with them on the other side of the Yarden westward because our inheritance has fallen to us on this side of Yarden eastward. Moshe said to them, if you will do this, if you will arm yourselves to go before Adonai to the war and and if every one of your soldiers will cross the Yarden before Adonai until he has driven out his enemies ahead of him, and if the land has been conquered before Adonai and only after that do you return, then you will be clear before Adonai and before Israel, and this land will be yours to possess before Adonai. 
But if you will not do this, then you have sinned against Adonai, and you must understand that your sin will find you out. Build cities for your little ones and enclosures for your sheep. Then do what you said you would do. The descendants of Gad and the descendants of Reuven said to Moshe, Your servants will do as my Lord orders. Our little ones, wives, flocks, and all our livestock will be there in the cities of Gilead. But your servants will cross over, every man armed for war before Adonai, to do battle, as my Lord says. So Moshe gave orders concerning them to Eleazar the Kohen, Yehoshua the son of Nun, and the clan leaders of the tribe of the people of Israel. Moshe said to them, If the descendants of Gad and Reuven cross over the yard and with you every man armed for battle before Adonai, and if the land is conquered before you, then you are to give them the land of Gilead as, their as theirs to possess. But if they do not cross with you armed, then you are to possess the land along with you in Canaan. The descendants of Gad and Reuben answered, We will do as Adonai has said to your servants. We will cross over the land of Canaan, armed before Adonai, and the land will be, and the land will possess for inheritance will be on the side of the yard. So Moshe gave the descendants of Gad and of Reuben, and also the half tribe of Manasheh, the son of Yosef, the kingdom of Sikon, king of the Emery, and of the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, the country and its cities within its borders, along with their surrounding towns. The descendants of Gad built Divan, Tarat, Aroi, Arat, Shafan, Yezir, Yeg Baha, Beit Nemri, and Beit Haran, fortified cities and also enclosures for sheep. The descendants of Reuven built Heshbon, Ilila, Karayitim, Nebo, Baal, Ma. These names have been changed, and Sivma. They renamed the cities they built. The descendants of Mechir, the son of Manasseh, went to Gilead and conquered it, dispossessing the Emery, who were with them. Moshe gave Gilead to Mechir, the son of Manasseh, and he lived in it. Yair, the son of Manasseh, went and captured its villages and called them Havot Yair, villages of Yair. Nevoch went and captured the Kanat with its, way, with its villages and named it Nevoch after himself. These were the stages and the journeys of the people of Israel as they left the land of Egypt divided into groups under the leaders of Moshe and Aaron. Moshe ordered each of the stages of their journeys by order of Adnai. They here are the starting points of each stage. They began their journey from Ramses at the first month, and the fifteenth day of the first month, the morning after Pesach. The people of Israel left pound, proudly in the, in the view of all the Egyptians, while the Egyptians were burying those among whom Adonai had killed all the firstborn, Adonai had also executed judgment on their gods. The people of Israel moved on from Ramses and camped in Sukkot. They moved on from Sukkot and camped at Etam, by the edge of the desert. They moved on from Etam and turned back to Pi Hakorat, in front of Baal Zaphon, and camped before Migdal. They moved on from Pene Hakorat, passed through the Sea of the Desert, counted three days' journey into the Etam Desert, and camped in Marah. They moved on from Marah and camped to Eliam. In Eliam, they were 12 springs and 70 palm trees where they camped there. They moved on from Eliam and camped by the Sea of Suf. They moved on from the Sea of Suf and camped in the Seen Desert. They moved on from the Seen Desert and camped to D Dovka. They moved on from Dovka and camped in Alush. They moved on from Alush and camped in Rephidim, where there was no water for the people to drink. They moved on from Rephidim and, and camped in the Sinai Desert. They moved on from the Sinai Desert and camped in Kivrot Hakatov. They moved on from Kivrot Hakatov and camped in Hetzorot. They moved on from Hetzorot and camped in Ritma. They moved on from Mitma and encamped in Rimon Peretz. They moved on from Rimon Peretz and encamped in Livna. They moved on from Livna and encamped in Rissa. They moved on from Rissa and encamped in 
Khala. They moved from Khala and camped to Mount Shafir. They moved from Mount Shafir and camped in Hirada. They moved on from Hirada and camped in Mechalot. They moved in they moved on from Mechalot and camped in Tachret. They moved on from Tachret and camped in Terach. They moved from Terach and camped in Mitka. They moved on from Mitka and camped in Hashmahna. They moved on from Hashmna and camped and camped at Misorot. They moved on from Misorot and camped in Bani Yakan. They moved on from Bani Yakan and camped in Hor Hagadil. They moved on from Hor Hagadil and camped in Yatvata. They moved on from Yatkataba and camped in Arvna. They moved on from Arvna and camped in Yitzyan Gavir. They moved on from Yitzyan Gavnir and camped in the Zin Desert, that is Kadesh. They moved on from Kadesh and camped on Mount Hor, they, at the border of the land of Edom. At Adonai's order, Aaron and the Kohen went up from Mount Hor and died there. On the first day of the month, the 14th day of the year, the people of Israel had left the land of Egypt. Aaron was 123 years old when he died on Mount, Mount Hor. The Canaanite king of Erad, who lived in Negev, in the land of Canaan, Heard, had heard that the people of Israel were coming, so they moved on from Mount Hor and camped in Zelamana. They moved on from Zelamana and camped in Puna. They moved on from Punan and camped in Ovat. They moved on from Ovat and camped in Ai Ha Avarim by the border of Moab. They moved on from Ai and camped in Divan Gad. They moved on from Divan Gad and camped in Elman Divlatim. They moved on from Elam Divlatim and camped in the Evrim Range in front of Navo. They moved on from They moved on from the Evrim Range and camped in the plains of Moab by the Yarden across from Jericho. They camped by the Yarden extended from Bayet Ha Yeshmot, all the way to Evel Hashitim in the plains of Moab. Adonai spoke to Moshe in the plains of Moab by the Yarden across from Jericho. He said, To tell the people of Israel, when you cross from the Yarden into the land of Canaan, you are to expel all the people living in the land from you, in front of you. Destroy all the stone figures, destroy all the metal statues, and demolish all their high places. Drive out the inhabitants of the land and live in it. For you, I have, for you I have given the land to you to possess. You will inherit the land by lot according to your families. You are to give more land to the larger families and less land to the smaller ones. Wherever the lot falls to any particular person, that will be his property. You will inherit according to the tribes of your ancestors. You are, but if you don't drive out the inhabitants of the land from in front of you, then you will not then those you allow to remain will become like thorns in your eyes and stings in your sides they will harass you in the land where you are living and in this event i will do to you as what intended to do to them